I just want to talk a little bit about goal setting, making some plans for the new year, because this is what I found. And I found that even, I tell you what, the older I get, the more important I understand how important it is to make plans and set goals. Tell your neighbor, make plans, set goals. Father, just pray that you would speak to hearts. Speak to hearts this afternoon, God. What I found is that the people who really don't see much change in their lives, and, and some of those are in this room, the people who go year after year, decade after decade, and basically everything remains the same or very little changes, usually those people who make no plans and set no goals in their life. They just kind of go, you know, bahalana, whatever will be, will be. God will have it. In fact, in fact there's, a, uh, there's even a teaching in the body of Christ. It's not in the Bible. It's in a large portion of the body of Christ. There's actually a teaching in the body of Christ that what I would call extreme sovereignty, which says something like this. It's, it's really more toward, it's, it's really more like Islam than it is Christianity. Extreme sovereignty teaches that whatever God's will is, it will happen no matter what. Now that sounds like a spiritual teaching, but it's not a Bible teaching. How many of you know you have got to cooperate with the will of God if you want the will of God to come into pass in your life? And you can resist the will of God. In fact, let me give you a verse for that. Some people would say, you know, the, the, the teaching goes like this, that uh, about the sovereignty of God, that God's will is always going to be done. It's, it's really kind of Islam. Islam says, you know, the will of Allah is everything that happens is the will of Allah. It's not Christianity. Yes, absolutely. God is Almighty God. Amen. We agree with that. There is nothing impossible, to the Lord. Amen. We agree with that. And God's overriding purposes, God's overriding will for this world will surely come to pass, and we can't stop that. Amen. But we are individuals. And God, in His sovereignty, in His wisdom, God has chosen to give you and I a will, the ability to choose. Tell your neighbor you have the ability to choose. We're not robots. He hasn't created us robots. You can't just sit back. In fact, here's another thing, and I'll give you a verse for it. And in fact, I can give you the, I'm not going to read the verse because I, uh, I don't have, a, I've got a lot of verses I want to go through. But if you look at Proverbs chapter 6, verses 6 through 8, this whole idea that uh, <clears throat> we don't have to plan, we don't have to set any goals, we don't have to do anything because, you know, the, the will of God is just going to happen. Really, it's laziness. We don't want to have the responsibility. The fact of the matter is, God will not do everything for you. God will work with you if you work with Him and you can see amazing things happen. Can I hear an amen? amen. <laughs> now, it sounds like some of you didn't want to hear that. Listen, God will not do everything for you. He won't. So if you're sitting there waiting for God to do everything He wants to do in your life, you're going to be waiting until the end of the, until the end of your life. You're dying. God, why didn't you do this? Why didn't you do that? Why didn't you do this? And God's going to say to you, listen, I've given you my word. I've given you my principles. I expect you to step out, to act in faith, to take some action, and I will come alongside of you and help you to accomplish my will in your life. Come on. So this whole idea that that, that somehow... God is just sovereign. God is sovereign, but, but we have a will. He's given you and I a will, and He wants us to partner with Him, to partnership with Him, to accomplish His will and purposes in our life. Come on, give the Lord a clap. Amen. Let me give you some verses on that. Of course, we're all familiar with uh, Jeremiah 29, 11. And, and I pray this becomes... You know, really, it's kind of a theme verse for BCA, but I pray it comes a theme verse for your life as well. Jeremiah 29, 11, For I know the plans that I have for you, declares the Lord, 
plans to prosper you and not to harm you, plans to give you hope and a future. Tell your neighbor, God has good plans. He says, plans not to harm you, but to prosper you, to give you a hope and to give you a future. So God's plans for our life are good plans. But again, the idea that the quote-unquote sovereign will of God will come to pass without any effort on your part is just not biblical. It's not scriptural. God has given us a will and we must cooperate with Him. Uh, Stephen preaching to uh, the Jews of his day says in Acts chapter 7 verse 51, and please don't take this offensively, I'm just going to make one point out of the last part of the verse. Acts chapter 7 verse 51, he says, You stiff-necked people, your hearts and ears are still uncircumcised. You are just like your ancestors. You always resist the Holy Spirit. That last phrase, you always resist the Holy Spirit. This teaching that God is so, and He is so powerful. I mean, He could absolutely do whatever He wants to do. But this teaching that God's will is always going to happen. God's will is always going to prevail. That it's, uh, you know, the, the teaching all goes that you can't, you can't resist God. Well, Peter just said, I just read it for you. Acts 7.51, they resisted the Holy Spirit. How many know the Holy Spirit is God? You do have the ability to resist the will of God. It takes cooperation to see the purposes and plans of God fulfilled in our lives. Uh, Joshua in Joshua chapter 24 and verse 15, he says these words, Choose yourselves this day whom you will serve, whether the gods your ancestors served beyond the Euphrates or the gods of the Amorites in whose land you are living. But as for me and my household, we will serve the Lord. Say, let's say it out loud. Choose. Now right there tells you God would never speak to you to choose if he doesn't give you the ability to choose. Come on. <laughs> you have the ability to choose. It's called a will. You can make a decision to cooperate him, co cooperate with him or not. And so this idea is that Bahalana, whatever will be, will be, you know, God will do whatever he wants in my life. It's just not biblical. You've got to cooperate with him and he wants to cooperate with you. And so the reason I'm teaching on this is that uh, we've got a new year coming up and, and I want you to begin thinking, praying and planning even now. I mean, actually, it's we start in, in November, October, November. We're already thinking about in, in, in all honesty. 2017 is so important to us. In fact, I, I, again, the older I get, the more I understand that uh, we need to plan. We need to purpose. We need to be purposeful, intentional. I've spent all of 2016, literally all of 2016, planning for 2017. The entire year. Every month I've sat down with my executive staff and we're planning what we believe God wants to do in and through our church for 2017. So it's taken a whole year to plan. We've got a whole lot of things that we're going to bring changes and, and adjustments and, and things that, that we believe God wants us to accomplish. Some, many of those things, most of those things I received through a prophetic word. Still, God wants us to plan. Uh, let me say one more thing about the will of God before, uh, before we go on to this, uh, the whole idea of planning. In the Lord's Prayer, Matthew chapter 6, verse 9. This then is how you should pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done. Say it together. Your will be done. So Jesus is teaching his disciples. His disciples have asked him, Lord, teach us how to pray. And Jesus is giving them a pattern. This is how you're to pray. It's not just to be a prayer to be repeated. But it's a pattern. And so he says, uh, you're to pray like this, our Father in heaven. So the first thing is that you approach God as your Father. Hallowed be your name. 
the first words out of your mouth in prayer should be worship unto him. And then he says, your kingdom come. So God's kingdom should be first. Seek ye first the kingdom of God, his righteousness. And then he says, you're to pray your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. There would be, listen to me, hear me. It should be common sense, but for some it's not. How many of you know there would be no need to pray, God, your will be done on earth, if God's will was already automatically already do always done on earth? Fact of the matter is, God's will is not being done on earth. Drug addiction is not God's will. Broken marriages is not God's will. You know, crime and murder and rape and famine and wars, these are not the will of God. So Jesus teaches his disciples that we are to cooperate with the Lord, asking that his will be done on earth, in your own life, in your family, in your finances, in your career, in your church, in your nation. We are to cooperate with it. John Wesley, the founder of the Methodist Church, said these famous words. He said, God does nothing except in answer to believing prayer. Now, I'm not sure if I agree 100% with that. Totally. I think God can, I think God can do anything He wants to do, whether we pray or not. Amen. But I, but I certainly agree with the spirit of what He's saying. Basically, what John Wesley is saying when he says, God does nothing except in answer to believing prayer. Basically, what he's saying is that God in His sovereignty, God has chosen not to intervene unless you ask Him to. Come on. We're going to be praying for our loved ones. Amen? Your prayers make a difference. Your prayer can move the hand of God. It's an amazing privilege. Prayer is the most amazing privilege and the most powerful privilege that we have on the planet. Can somebody say amen? Your prayers make a difference. Again, Jesus in his teaching, the, uh, Jesus taught the parable of the importune widow. The whole point of the parable of the importune widow is that her persistence in prayer moved that judge to make a favorable decision on her behalf. And then he ends the parable by saying that, speaking about his heavenly father, that how much more will he do so for those who cry out to him? Your prayers can move the hand of God. Can you say amen? amen? Come on, most of you have, almost every one of us have experienced that, right? How many of you have experienced that God did something in answer to prayer? Let me see your hand, come on. You, you experienced that God did something in answer to prayer. So what if you wouldn't have prayed? Do you think you would have done it anyway? I don't think so. I don't think so. Otherwise, why would he say pray? So God wants us to be in partnership with him, to cooperate with him. Now, I want us to uh, really focus in on planning here this afternoon for the coming year. Let me give you some verses on this so that you, could, you know that... Uh, Planning, tell your neighbor, planning is scriptural. Because some people have the, some people have the crazy notion, you know, and, and that, I'll tell you, sometimes they actually think it's spiritual. It sounds so spiritual. I don't make any plans. I just let God lead me. Well, no, you're just lazy. I'm sorry to say, you're just lazy. And the Bible says that. I'll give you a verse for it. It's uh, Proverbs chapter 6, verses 6 through 8. The one who doesn't plan, the, the whole idea there in 6 to 8, it talks about the ant. The one who doesn't plan, he's just lazy. Let me give you some verses that tell you that the Bible does tell us that we are to make plans. Proverbs chapter 16, verse 3. Proverbs chapter 16, verse 3. Commit to the Lord whatever you do, and he will establish... Your plans. Say together, your plans. Let me read it again. Commit to the Lord whatever you do, and He will establish whose plans? Whose plans? God's plans? Your plans. See again, 
There's a group of people who think that it's being spiritual to say, well, I don't have any plans of my own, just whatever God plans for my life. Well, it's not spiritual. It's lazy. God says he will establish your plans. Now, obviously, you can have plans that are not the will of God, and God will not establish those. So it's, it's, finding, it's finding a way to get your will in line with his will and cooperate with him to fulfill his plan and his purpose in your life. All right. Commit your way to the Lord, whatever you do, and he will establish your plan. Let me give you another verse. Pro, uh, Psalms chapter 20, Psalm chapter 20, verse 4. May he give you the desire of your heart and make what? All your plans succeed. Whose plans? Make your plans succeed. So you've got to have some plans. Now, obviously, you have to submit those plans to the Lord. You have to uh, cooperate with Him. We need His grace, His mercy, uh, His His guidance, His wisdom in order to accomplish all that God wants to do. But again, I'm going to say this again, and this is not. This is because I really love you. I find a whole lot of people, even Christians, two years, three years, five years, ten years, fifteen years down the road, and if you look at their life, not much has changed. And they have the wrong notion, maling paniniwale, maling pananao, they have the wrong notion that, well, it must be just the will of God. No, it's not the will of God. God says this. God says, my plans for you are not to harm you. My plans for you, says the Lord, are to prosper you, to give you a hope and to give you a future. So God has amazing plans for your life, but he expects you to seek him, he expects you to make some effort. He expects you to even make some plans. Well, how can I know if my plans are God's plan? We'll get that. We'll get to that in just a minute. But I want to give you another verse here. Proverbs chapter sixteen, verse one. Proverbs sixteen, verse one. Here, here, this one. Proverbs sixteen, one. To humans belong the plans of the heart. To who belong the plans? To who belong the plans? To you and I belong the plans of the heart. Look at your neighbor and say, it's up to you to make your plans. Now again, obviously you've got to make your plans in prayer. You've got to make your plans in waiting on the Lord and, you know, check it with Him. Seek Him, pray about it. But to you belong the plans. Look at your neighbor again and say, you make your plans. The reason our lives don't change is we don't plan for them to change. We don't set any goals. Now he gives a warning in the same chapter, Proverbs chapter 16 I'll read verse 1 again and then, and then read verse 2, which is more of a warning. Verse 1 says, to, human, to humans belong the plans of the heart, but from the Lord comes the proper answer of the tongue. Verse 2 says this, All a person's ways seem pure to them, but motives are weighed by the Lord. And then verse 3, which we read earlier, let me go ahead and read that again. Commit to the Lord whatever you do, and He will establish your plans. So verse 2 is an obvious warning to us that when we make our plans, you've got to check your heart. Amen? Check your heart. Make sure that your plans aren't purely selfish motives because God's not going to cooperate with that. Make sure that your plans are not in direct opposition to God's plan and will for your life. Now, I know you're, you're, you've got to be asking the question. We're going to get to just a moment. How do I know if God's plan, what God's plan is for me? How do I know if the plans that I'm making is His will for my life? 
So he says here in verse 2, all a person's ways seem pure to them, but motives are weighed by the Lord. In other words, we might be thinking that the plans that we are making are right, but we've got to look at the motive of the heart. What's your motive in going abroad? What's your motive in starting a business? What's your motive in uh, starting that relationship? What's your motive in changing jobs? You, you need to let, let the Holy Spirit in prayer, let the Holy Spirit ser search your heart, be willing to submit your plans to the Lord. Commit your plans to the Lord. Submit your plans to the Lord and He will establish them. Keep your heart right. Amen? Now, let me give you another verse on that. Uh, this is one of my favorite verses in the Bible. John chapter 15 and verse 7. John 15 verse 7. Let me see. I've got it here somewhere. Jesus says, If you remain in me, and my words remain in you, ask whatever you wish, and it will be done for you. If you remain in me, and my words remain in you, ask whatever you wish, and it will be done for you. Now that's an amazing verse. Don't try to change its meaning. Some people try to manipulate that verse to make it say something that it's not saying. I tell you what, you, be, you do well to read the Word of God and take it at face value. Whatever the Word of God is saying, just believe what it says. Jesus says, if you will remain in me and my re words will remain in you, you can ask whatever you wish and it will be done for you. Come on. Is that an amazing verse or what? Is that an amazing promise or what? Come on, give the Lord a clap. It's amazing. Don't change its meaning. He means what he says. But the obvious implication here is that as we maintain communion with him and we allow his word to dominate our lives, then you're not going to ask something that's out of the will of God. Your heart is going to be in submission in relationship to Him, in relationship to His Word. Your heart is going to be submission to Him. So when you ask, you're going to be asking things that are in line with His will and purpose. It's all about relationship. I'll tell you what, you can walk in such close fellowship with God, in such submission, and you don't have to be full-time ministry. You don't have to be a, a, a priest or a, or a pastor or a, or a nun. or a, you, know, you, in your daily, ordinary life, in the office place, in the school, in everyday life, you can walk in such submission to the Lord, in such fellowship with Him, that when you ask something, God will answer on your behalf. Because he loves you. Because he knows your heart. Amen? If you abide in me and my words abide in you, ask whatever you wish and it will be granted for you. Amen. Relationship is the key. Now, one more verse and then we'll talk about some steps to making plans and setting goals that are in line with the will of God. Proverbs chapter 21 Verse 5, Proverbs 21, verse 5. The plans of the diligent lead to profit as surely as haste leads to poverty. Let me read that again. This is NIV, and then I'm going to read New Living Translation. The plans of the diligent lead to profit as surely as haste leads to poverty. So the plans of the diligent, well, let me read it in the New Living Translation. That'll help. Good planning... And hard work lead to prosperity. Let's say that together. Good planning and hard work lead to prosperity. One more time. Good planning and hard work lead to prosperity. Would anybody here like to prosper in your life? Well, there's the key right there. Good planning 
and hard work lead to prosperity. Haste leads to poverty. In other words, pabigla, bigla, you, you make sudden decisions without really planning, without really praying, without really seeking advice, without really seeking counsel. You just make a sudden... I'm telling you, it breaks my heart. I've been in the Philippines for 30... Oh, my goodness. Uh, came first. I first came 1982, so that's a long time. <laughs> oh, my goodness. Some of you weren't even alive when I came to the Philippines. <laughs> Breaks my heart. I've seen this happen so many times. And many of you have friends, and some of you, your own, you know, maybe even your own mom or dad or you know, this I've seen this happen so many times. The Philippines and it breaks my heart. Filipinos will go abroad, they'll work for five years, ten years, some of them 15, 16, even 20 years, saving up their money, which is all that's all a good and noble thing. Nothing wrong with that. They'll come home with the idea to start a business, but big la big la. They don't think it through. They don't get advice. They have no idea about that business. They'll just start a business. And in, in one to two years, all of their life savings totally wiped out. Come on. Every single one of us knows somebody, something like that. Every single one. Breaks my heart. My goodness. Sacrificed 5, 10, 15, 20 years of their life to save up money and then come home and, you know, I'm going to start a business. But they just, go into something suddenly without really thinking it through, without really getting proper advice, or the advice that they get is from people who, you know, here, here's, a, here's a simple, here's a simple common sense thing. Don't ask somebody who's not successful how to be successful. Hello? You know, if your brother-in-law who hasn't worked a day in his life, he's always been bumming money off of you, then you're going to ask him what kind of business to start? Come on, give me a break. Find somebody that's been successful. Amen? Because they know how to do it. So the Bible tells us the plans of the diligent lead to profit as surely as haste leads to poverty. Good planning and hard work lead to prosperity, but hasty shortcuts lead to poverty. So I'm preaching on this now because this December, as you prepare for Christmas and then the New Year's, I want you to really begin making some plans. You won't mind if I repeat this, but tell your neighbor again, make your plans. Set your goals. I tell you what, it'll change your life. I've had numerous members of our church, numerous members of our church. I could name names, I won't, because I don't want to embarrass them or put them on the spot. Numerous members of their church who have come to me and say, Pastor Rich, you know, five years ago, we were having a hard time, but I listened to your message on planning. I listened to your message on goal setting. God is blessing us. God is prospering us. It absolutely changed our life. Come on, give the Lord a clap. I tell you, I've heard that numerous times. Before that, they had no plans, no goals. They just thought, you know, whatever God wants to do, He'll do. Well, no, God wants to cooperate with you. So you've got to make some plans. You've got to set some goals. So I'm going to give you a couple of easy steps how to make some plans and some goals that will help you to become all that God wants you to become. Number one, obviously, you should pray. You know, pr prayer is... Prayer is humility because prayer is dependence upon God. Pr prayer is saying, I can't do this on my own. And that's where a lot of people fail, even Christians. They'll go out and they'll do something. They never prayed about it. They never asked God. They never asked His favor. They never asked. Or if they did, they just kind of did it in, in, a lot of Christians do this. Lord, please bless my business. They never really wait on Him to know if that's the business that he wants him to go into. And then they wonder when they've lost all their money, Lord, why didn't you bless my business? Well, because they weren't really waiting on the Lord in the first place. They were already determined in their heart, I'm going to do what I think I need to do. I'm not really going to inquire of the Lord. I'm not really going to get wisdom from God. Lord, bless, bless what I'm doing. Instead of, 
really seeking the Lord and say, God, I need your guidance. I need some wisdom. Bring some people into my life. Give me some signs here. Show me if this is the business that you want me to enter. Show me if this is the career. Show me if this is the job. Somehow, God, I know I am your son. I am your daughter. I can hear your voice. John 10 tells me that I am one of your sheep, and your sheep hear your voice. Amen. You can hear the voice of God. God will speak to you. He will show you. He will lead you. He will direct you. He will guide you. But if you go off on your own and just do whatever you want, then don't blame God when everything falls apart. Hello. So the first thing to do is to pray and be in submission to the will of God. Pray and ask God to direct you, to lead you, to guide you. The, this, the second thing, and this may surprise you, But the second thing, I think, is to follow your heart. Now, why would I say that? Follow your heart. Follow your follow your conscience. In other words, well, let me say it this way. The Holy Spirit, God the Holy Spirit, lives in our hearts. He lives on the inside of us. And that's where God speaks to us. This is a key to hearing the voice of God. God will speak to you not primarily in your intellect. God speaks to you in your heart, in your spirit. So God will put something on the inside of your heart. Whether you're to do this or to do that. The the, the Bible says this, let the peace of Christ, in, in the Greek the word actually is, be your umpire. You know, umpire is like, uh, like referee in, in the ball game. Let the peace of Christ lead you, guide you. Tell your neighbor, listen to your heart. If you have no peace on the inside, you're getting ready to make a business deal, you're getting ready to make a move, you're getting ready to take a job, and you've got no peace, that's a sign. You probably shouldn't do it. So follow your heart. Listen to your heart. Whatever you do, make sure that what you're doing, you have a clear conscience, a clean conscience. I tell you what, here's another mistake a lot of people make, but even a lot of, unfortunately, a lot of Christians. Avoid any get rich quick things. Hello? Just based on greed. And I know. I know pastors, I'm talking about pastors who have sold their belongings and gone to dug for some treasure somewhere, some gold somewhere, invested large amounts of money in gold, and they never find anything. Avoid any get-rich-quick schemes. Hello. Somebody comes by and tells you, oh, if you just invest here, you just put your money, oh, you're going to be a millionaire in three weeks, you know, oh, baloney. It's based on greed. The plans of the diligent lead to prosperity. Come on. Hard work and good plans. There's no shortcuts. Amen? Give the Lord a clap. Amen. Hard work, good plans. You want to prosper? It's planning well and working hard. Avoid the get-rich-quick schemes. Follow your heart. Let the peace of God lead you. Let the peace of God guide you. The Bible tells us that we have a new heart and we have a new spirit. And in that spirit, man, you can hear the voice of God. He will lead you and guide you. You know, the key, the, the, the greatest key, and in fact, I'll, I'll just give you a tip on a really great little booklet. I, I don't know if they still have this at PCBS. They had it years ago. I bought it. The best little book, tiny little booklet on knowing the will of God that I ever, ever read in my life. I know you can get it online. It's by a, a man. His last name is Poen, P-O-E-N. I can't remember his first name. It's about the will of God. And, and basically, the basic theme of this little booklet, if you want to know the will of God, I highly recommend the book by Poen, P-O-E-N is his last name, about the will of God. Basically, the bottom line is this. If you will submit your will 
surrender yourself to the will of God, you will hear God speak. The reason we don't hear God speak more often is because we've already decided what we're going to do. Siya talaga, Panginoon. Siya nga. Siya, alam ko, siya na nga. Siya talaga. Hindi ba, Panginoon? Bigyan mo siya sa akin. Well, you've already decided. God won't stop you. You have a will. You have the ability to choose. Mag-abroad ako, mag-abroad ako, mag-abroad ako. Kahit ano mangyari, mag-abroad ako. Pagpalaya mo ako, Panginoon, mag-abroad ako. Well, you're on your own. Market ganon. Here up dito sa Saudi. <laughs> you already decided. The key to hearing the voice of God is being submissive to His will. You're to- Listen, I know the plans for you, says the Lord. Plans not to harm you. Plans to give you a hope and to give you a... God is a good God. He wants the best for your life. Come on! Why are you afraid to surrender the will of God? God wants nothing but good for you. It's crazy not to submit to the will of God. He wants the best for you. God is not planning misery for your life. The misery that comes to your life is because of your own mistakes. Amen? So submit to the will of God. Have have a heart that is submissive to His will and to His purpose. So number one is pray. Number two is follow your heart. Let, let, Let your heart be surrendered to Him. Listen to the voice of the Holy Spirit on the inside of you. Number three, set some plans, make some goals, write them down, pray over them then you begin to make adjustments as the Holy Spirit leads. So when I make plans all the time, in fact, I've been wanting to tell my wife this, uh, I meant to tell her to, to, her, to her yesterday. I'm learning not just the plan for the year, I'm, I'm ready to make a 15-year plan. Well, Pastor, how do you know what's going to happen in 15 I don't know what's going to happen in 15 years, but I know this. I know that God knows what's going to happen in 15 years. And I know that if I will begin to plan now and strategize with a right heart, He will lead me, He will guide me, He will direct me along the way. And I know also this, if I make no plans and set no goals, probably nothing will be accomplished. Hello? I'm talking to you. If you make no plans and set no goals... Probably nothing will change for you. You'll be in the same position you are today, next year, the following year, the following year. So make your plans, set your goals, submit it to the Lord. Be willing to adjust those plans. Be willing to surrender those plans if need be. But a lot of times, even the plans that we make, when they don't work out, it doesn't necessarily mean that it's not the will of God. How many of you know we have a, a Ka'awe, we have an enemy and he will do everything he can do to stop you, to hinder you. That you won't fulfill God's plan and purpose for your life. So uh, here's another mistake Christians make. A lot of times they feel like they have something from them. They feel like they have a, 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 a prompting from the Lord, maybe to start a business, maybe to start a career or something and it doesn't work out and they can't, you know, they get all confused. Maybe it wasn't the will of God. Well, maybe it was the will of God. You were not just learning how to do it God's way. You ran off and got ahead of the Lord. Or maybe it was the will of God and the enemy came in to stop you. And one little failure and you give up and say, well, maybe it's not God's will. Well, maybe it is God's will. You just have to persevere. Come on, everybody say persevere. One more time, persevere. There's a key word right there. Persevere. Do you know in your heart that God wants you to have a business? You know in your heart that God wants you to, whatever it is, to do. You know in your heart, then you persevere. You don't give up. Amen? 
You don't give up easily. You persevere. Once you've set some plans, or once you've set some goals, then you've got to make some plans. So, so the goals, you know, maybe your goal is uh, to have your own business. Maybe your goal is to be used mightily of the Lord. Uh, maybe your goal is to uh, buy a house. Uh, whatever your goal is, whatever you have a goal, then you've got to make some plans to accomplish. It's no good to have goals and then not have plans. Your goals won't be accomplished unless you make some plans. How am I going to get from point A to point B? And you've got to make, there's two, there's two things that there's a balance here. In, in one, in one spectrum or one, one, uh, one side of it is that you want to make goals that are not too crazy unrealistic. In other words, just for example, let's say, let's say you're earning right now, you're earning 10,000 pesos a month. It probably is not realistic to say, by 2017, I want to be earning 100,000 pesos a month. That's probably not realistic. Are you following me? On the other hand, you don't want to put your goals so small. I heard one guy say this. He said this. His friend asked him, he said, oh, it's getting, getting really near New Year's. Do you make New Year's? Yeah, I make New Year's resolutions every year. I make a New Year. Really? And uh, like, what kind of resolutions do you make? He said, uh, he said, well, you know, a lot of people, they make these New Year's resolutions that they never reach and they just end up being disappointed in their lives. So he said, I make, he said, I make New Year's resolutions that are just, that I know I can reach and then I'll be encouraged by them. Oh, really? So, so what's your New Year's resolution? Well, this, this year I'm going to have a haircut. <laughs> he was sure he could accomplish that, right? My point being is that, uh, you don't want to put your goals so low that you're not stretching your faith. Amen. So if you're making 10,000 pesos a month, maybe a realistic goal would be, you know, by 2017, by the end of 2017, I want to be making 15,000 pesos a month or 18,000 pesos. That would take a stretch of faith. Right? You want to believe God. Stretch your faith, but don't be crazy. Amen? Okay, give the Lord a clap for that. Amen. And then, obviously, you've got to make some plans to that. Step out in faith, take some risks, and even if it fails, don't give up. I know the plans that I have for you, declares the Lord. Plans to prosper you and not to harm you. Plans to give you hope and to give you a future. So God wants to be involved in your planning, but you have to make the plans. You make the plans. God's plans are always good plans. And He'll give you ideas. He'll give you a direct, He'll put something on the inside of your heart. I believe there's many of you here today, there's something on the inside of your heart. And for whatever reason, you're afraid to step out. For whatever reason, you, the, the enemy may be lying to you and, and, and you say, I could never do that. But, but really, it's stirring in your heart. Stirring in your heart. God wants you to, whatever it is, maybe it's to start a business. Maybe it's, just, I, I feel like there's some people that it's something to do with music. You think, I could never, I could never be, a, I could never sing, I could never play an instrument. But God is putting in your heart. I, I don't have that ability. Well, how do you know? Until you try. Amen? God, God will put things in your heart. He'll stir things up in your heart. And then you've got to begin to step out in faith. And, and even if you, you know, Dr. George Hill, I don't know how, how, how many of you have ever heard Dr. George Hill preach. He's one of the most powerful, excellent preachers I've ever heard in my life. And that's not just to, to, to make, to, to say good things about him. He's an amazing preacher. The first time he preached, he preached for about five minutes and he got so scared and so mumbled over his words. He threw down his Bible, got his wife to get up and preach. And he said, I will never preach again. It's a true story. But you hear him today, that guy's a preaching machine. God will stir something in your heart. Maybe you've already started a business and you weren't successful and so you thought you'd thrown away the idea that maybe business is not for me. Well, maybe business is for you. Maybe it's a different business. 
Maybe you need to seek the Lord a little bit more. Get some advice. Whatever it is, God has good plans for your life. He's put things in your heart that He wants you to accomplish. Can we all stand together? We're going to pray.